Welcome back to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We'll be right back with today's guest, but we want to give a shout out to our podcast partners, We Coach, the Florida Coalition of Coaches, and the Global Community of Women in High School Sports. These are three great organizations that you should be a part of, so check them out. Now, please stay with us and don't fast forward. Take a quick listen to our podcast sponsors. They are all great products, and if you're not using them, you really should. So here we go with the sponsors. We want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive Indoor Scoring Tables and Video Boards. You've heard me say before, one of the best purchases I ever made was our Sideline Score Table. We use it for games, of course, but we also use it for pep rallies. We use it for signing ceremonies. Their products are so versatile and their customer service is just outstanding. Go to sidelineinteractive.com, schedule a live web demo, see their tables and their boards in action. That's sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to say thanks to Snap Mobile. Go to snapraise.com and check out their entire suite of platforms that are designed to help you as an athletic director. Snap Store, Snap Manage, Snap Connect, they're all there, including Snap Raise, their fundraising platform. We've used Snap Raise with great success, and they've helped schools just like yours raise over $700 million. They even have a program where you can get your funding before you actually start your fundraiser. Go to snapraise.com and get started today. We also want to thank Gipper. Go to Gipper.com and see how ADs are creating world-class content. You can do it in seconds on any device. You don't need any design experience. Go to Gipper.com and tell them you heard about it on the podcast. Use our code ADPOD10 and you'll get 10% off. Create custom branded content for your school's social media channel. That's Gipper.com. We also want to thank Hometown Ticketing. Hometown Ticketing's recently acquired Ticket Spigot, and together they're going to bring you an even better online ticketing experience. For now, go to hometownticketing.com. They're going to show you how to sell your tickets online for all your events, not just sports, but things like school plays, concerts, dances, even graduation. Go to hometownticketing.com, and you're going to have a dedicated client success manager that's providing hands-on support every step of the way. That's every step of the way. Go to hometownticketing.com today. Simple and easy online ticketing. We also want to thank Huddle. Go to huddle.com and change the way you see the game. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years, but when I became an athletic director, I made sure our school was a Huddle school. And Huddle provided our coaches, our teams, our athletes, the tools they needed to succeed at the highest level. Go to huddle.com and see why we believe in sports and teams believe in huddle. Join the 6 million users and turn your school into a huddle school. That's huddle.com. We also want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. The Wall of Fame is an interactive touchscreen console that highlights your school's top performers, both past and present, in athletics, academics, and the arts. But it's so much more than that. The Wall of Fame is an extensive, content program that helps you every step of the way, allowing you to tell more compelling stories that will better engage your audience. Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. And once you've decided to make your purchase, go to the link vitalsignswalloffame.com slash Jake and get 5% off. That's vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to say thanks to Final Forms. Go to finalforms.com and prepare for your best season ever. Final Forms is there to help your stakeholders, your coaches, and you as an athletic director um, in so many different areas. We can't describe them in this one commercial. Go to athletic surveys, excuse me, go to finalforms.com slash Jake and um, tell them you heard about it on the podcast. That's finalforms.com slash Jake. Get started on the Final Forms team. And speaking of athletic surveys, we want to thank Athletic Surveys for sponsoring the AD Toolbox segment of our podcast. Athletic Surveys are a quick and easy way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire program. Athletic directors typically only hear from that 2%, those disgruntled parents or maybe a frustrated student athlete, and we need to hear from them. But you also need to hear from the 98% that support your program. It's a tremendously valuable tool to have when you're meeting with a parent or your principal or your school board. And athletic surveys can provide that to you. Go to athleticsurveys.com 
to get started. That's athleticsurveys.com. Let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. We're taking a trip today. We're going all the way to Hawaii, and we're going to be visiting with Cornelia Haliniak. She is a certified master athletic administrator, and she is the associate AD at the Kamehameha Schools on Kiao, Hawaii. Uh, I met Cornelia at uh, the recent national conference, uh, introduced by a mutual friend, and uh, just thought she'd be a great guest, and she was gracious enough to uh, appear with us today. So, Cornelia Aliniak, welcome to the Educational Lady Podcast. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. Well, thanks again for taking time to be with us. I know it's very early where you're at, so let's go and jump right into it. We always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Where'd you grow up? Uh, where'd you go to high school? Uh, sports, of course. Um, maybe take us up through your own college years. Then we'll take a quick break and then come back and hear about your early uh, teaching and coaching career. But uh, what's uh, what's the Cornelia Haliniak uh, origin story? Okay, so Cornelia Haliniak um, and people that call me Cornelia are good friends. Uh, I usually go by Hokulani. Uh, so, yes. So now you know me as Cornelia, and that means you're a good friend of mine. And usually that's how I know people know me. They go, Cornelia. So anyway, yeah. Um, I became an athletic administrator 12 years ago. I think it was put in my lap as far as how I was brought up. So my father, of course, been a coach for over 50 years. Um, he passed three years ago, which is is sad. I was able to learn at that time. I think it was just the process of changing uh, for Title IX. So in Hawaii, in 1977, was the first years um, we were able to have some female sports here, uh, league wise. Uh, my father was um, a real <clears throat> go getter and pusher with Pasimink to make that possible here in the island. So with that, um, I truly did not want to be an athletic director. I really wanted to be an athletic sports information person, uh, but that fell through, but I still do it. Um, I do it as part-time here at the UH Hilo, where you know you just get to work at the games. Um, I was a teacher at in special needs for a few years before moving into the athletic directorship. And the funny part is I retired like you from the DOE, but decided from the public school sector but decided to, ah, oh, there's a position opening. Let me try, try it. I've never worked in the private sector. So being in the private sector has brought a new entity to learn about athletic directors because there's a lot of uh, stakeholders, you know, parents, uh, admin, and so forth. So with that said, I was able to get a full scholarship to play volleyball at BYU Hawaii. And then I got married and then I took a delay. And then at 28, I was offered another Another full scholarship to attend Shamanad University to play volleyball. But at that time, I had two children and a husband. Um, so we talked about it, and my husband said, Go for it. It's one of your dreams. So I was able to fulfill that dream. And it was harder being in college at 28, working out with 18 year olds and 19 year olds. So that made it really challenging because I had to work out extra than them just to keep in shape and not lose a starting position. You know, and, and being a mother and leader at that time, it was um, it was a learning experience. Um, and it taught me a lot to deal with that generation to make sure, you know, girls are girls. They, they gossip and they're all, oh, you're better than me and you shouldn't be. You know, it's like, let's get over it, girls. Let's just go to class. Let's go to practice and let's make it work. You know, and, and it was a good thing. Um, it was a good example for my two children. Um, it was challenging working full time, going to school full time bringing up two kids at the same time. And and I forgot, I had a husband too that you have to care for too. You know, so it it, it was, um, it, I'm living a dream come true, I think now. So it, it was just, I yeah. So the principal that I work for now, uh, where I worked with him at Ke uh, Keokaha Elementary as a special ed teacher. And um, <laughs> he told me, go ahead, apply for it. I'm gonna fire you, go do that job. So that's how I became, an athletic administrator and it just flew it was just heavenly and the two mentors i i have um are very um instrumental into where i'm at besides my family uh these two mentors were great so that's 
the short end of it. And I was able to coach volleyball, softball, basketball. So hopefully I can get back into it, but I want to do elementary level. So like you said, it's busy that I want to do. <laughs> right. Wow. Um, I want to go back to uh, your days as, uh, let's say, uh, a non-traditional college student, scholarship <laughs> student. Um, uh, how, uh, you know, we talk about athletic directors trying to, you know, organize and manage their day and, and find some balance between work and life. You know, that had to be a, uh, some different challenges, you know, balancing full-time student, um, you know, college athlete uh, and, you know, wife and mother, you know, what were some, what are some memories looking back at that as how you made that work? <laughs> I don't know how it worked. It just worked. <laughs> I think I think I was very fortunate. I have a, you know, we all have families that we depend on. So my mom and dad were instrumental in that. Well, more my mom, you know, my sister did uh, just work. So she was really helpful too. Um, <clears throat> my husband had to work. He was in the military at that time, you know, so he was not around as much as he, he could have been, but that's, you know, he was the breadwinner. Uh, working full time was graveyard and worked everything in between that and if we had practice at 6 a.m in the morning at the, those 6 a.m practices worked the best for my schedule because <laughs> i could go practice my mom then would take the kids to school i could go to classes and i'm done by about two i'd work till 10 come home wake up my kids spend some time with them um it, it was um like like an athletic director uh challenging and coordinating everything as much as possible so it i don't know how it was done but I remember going to all my kids' events, and that was the main thing that I needed to make sure I did as a mother. You know, I got to go to PTA meetings. I got to go to their, you know, their games. And I couldn't take them to practice, but there was some sacrifices. But, yeah, no, it, it was hard. I don't remember most of it, but <laughs> it got done. <laughs> uh, well, what you do remember, obviously, are great memories. So uh, I'm yeah. sure that was most of it. Uh, for our listeners, uh, our guest today is Cornelia Halinak. And she's a certified master athletic administrator. She's the associate athletic director at the Kamehameha Schools in Kiao, Hawaii. We're going to take our first break, but we'll be right back. So please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive, indoor scoring tables and video boards for being a sponsor of the podcast. You heard me mention before, one of the best purchases I ever made as an athletic director was our sideline interactive score table. You know, we use it for home games, but we also use it for pep rallies. We use it for signing ceremonies. Their products are tremendously versatile and their customer service is just outstanding. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and schedule a live web demo and see their tables and their boards in action. That's sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to say thanks to Snap Mobile. Go to snapraise.com and check out their entire suite of platforms that are designed to help you as an AD do your job better. You have Snap Store, Snap Manage, Snap Connect, and a lot of others. Snap Raise is the fundraising platform. We used it with great success, and they've helped schools just like yours raise over $700 million. They even have a program where you can get your funding before you actually start your fundraiser. I don't think anybody else offers that. Go to snapraise.com and check out the entire platform. That's snapraise.com. Hey, I need to apologize. I didn't realize that's you that wrote those books. I read those two books and they are have been so helpful since I've moved into the private sector of the athletic world. So thank you for those two books. It's it's amazing. I, I, I continue to read it. Oh, well, you are you are too kind. Uh, <laughs> and uh, again, the third edition of the Athletic Director's Toolbox will be coming out in the fall of 2023. And your toolbox suggestions, which we'll get to at the end of this podcast, are going to be a part of that book. So thanks for reading and, and thanks for sharing with others. So let's go and jump back in. Um, in the first segment, you alluded to a couple of different mentors, and that's one of the segments that uh, I, I always enjoy listening to. Uh, none of us get to where we're at on our own. There's always people along the way that help us. So who are some of the mentors that have helped you in your uh, athletic director journey? Okay. So besides my family, uh, you might have heard of these two. One is Keith Morioka. And he was huge in NIAAA, and he's a retired um, 
athletic director, as well as Blaine Geisen. Blaine Geisen was another huge, huge part of me transitioning over to become an athletic director or athletic administrator. And it, it's, it was just phenomenal working with the two. So uh, the two difference is one was in a private school sector and one was in a public school sector. So I got to learn both, both sides of it. And, and it was, um, how do I explain this? Blaine Geisen, I met him when I was 10 years old. Um, I was at a sports camp at University of Hawaii Manoa. And of course I was a little rascal and in Hawaii we call that kolohe. So, um, and I, I'm, I'm a, I was a plump kid at that time. And then the weight moved back and then after pregnancy, it comes back again. But anyway, it's like a roller coaster. So with Blaine, he remembered me and it was really neat um, how he is so positive, but yet direct. Um, he wants to make sure if I'm learning from him, I gotta be one of the best um, in his eyes. With Keith Morioka, he was more of the fun type. Okay, you have to learn this. You have to get into this. You have to make sure you do this. You cannot do this. So I'm like, okay. So I guess in the public school sector, it was different because you cannot lobby as an athletic administrator. They do all the lobbying, uh, lobbying for us. And then another part of that was they were able to lobby in the state of Hawaii for each school to have an athletic trainer, whether they're public or private. So that was really neat in that one. He uh, Kiki was a big part. Of, well, we call him Kiki. Um, he was a big part in that. So he he and I still to this day communicate. And at least once a month, you know, I I go and talk story with him, and and you know, we we evaluate things. <laughs> and then Blaine, um, monthly monthly calls. He and I talk monthly. He and I he makes sure I'm okay. And then he coming from Kamehameha was interesting because he always says, you'll be good at Kamehameha, but you need to watch your mouth. You know, you and your mouth, you just say things on your mind and you just tell it how it is. And sometimes you have to use the right words. So being here at Kamehameha the last seven months has brought a different growth as an athletic administrator. Um, and it, and it, it's nice to be at a school that has money. <laughs> I mean, they, they you know, it, it's nice. You know, you don't have to worry about that fundraising or what's the next step how are you going to get your kids to states or you know it, it's it, it, that's phenomenal but the politics on each side is pretty much the same and you just have to deal with all of that so that's yeah. I love my mentors though to this day I, I in fact I just saw Blaine on Tuesday so that was really nice yeah we had lunch and we got to talk story and, and that's one of my favorite things to hear is that uh, people still are in touch with and still, you know, work with, have a relationship with their mentors. It's not just someone, you know, from from way in their past. Um, and you, I'm glad you brought up, you know, your experiences at both public school and private schools. You know, I think the, the public sometimes gets into, uh, you know, a good, bad, right or wrong. And it's really not that. It's just a different experience. Uh, but at the same time, Kids are kids and parents are parents. And, and so, you know, those are the things that uh, that you're working with as an AD. Um, let's go and talk a little bit about your uh, journey with the NIAAA and um, your state association. You know, you're a certified master athletic administrator, and that just doesn't happen by accident. Um, how did you first uh, become aware of the leadership training program and, and what were Again, what's your journey uh, on that uh, NIAAA pathway? So 12 years ago, <laughs> Keith Morioka, Blaine Geisen, and another person, Mel Imai, they were instrumental as well as Kenya Mase. They, and oh, another one too. Um, oh, what is his name? Dwight Toyama, uh, Raymond Fujino. They were all instrumental in this. And I'm one of eight CMAAs holders in the state of Hawaii. Um, how I got on that journey was they said, you need to do this again. You know, they're telling me what to do, not asking. You need to do this. You need to get involved in committees. You need to work on your CAA um, and your CMAA, which public school athletic directors, if they get their CAA, they move up to an athletic director three, which is a phenomenal like $20,000 uh, upgrade on your pay. So, yeah, and that's just in the public school sector um when you get your cmaa they don't have a, a raise for it but they're working on it in legislation right now so hopefully that that acquires our athletic administrators statewide to get their cmaa 
So in 2012, I mean, 12 years ago, I was able to join the athletic world um, as the athletic director and took all the classes, uh, got my CAA first. And then I said, okay, you know what? I'm doing this student advisory here on the island. So I was able to work with that to do it at a state level in 2013. So since then, I was trying to gather all this and do that. And um, I'm not a really good writer. Um, so when CMAA came out with the, when you can talk about it, I thought that was phenomenal. So I did, I was able to, I had more, I guess, more strength or more motivation to do it. So it was, it was neat. I, I did a PowerPoint. I had the kids talk about it. I had commercials, you know, and I explained what we did here. So, um, and in the matter of minutes, they, they, allowed me to get my CMAA and I didn't know how to do it. And this was all during the pandemic. So in March, in March, 2020, I was able to complete my CMAA and it, it, I didn't realize how much confidence that brought in me to establish more student advisory, student athlete advisories. So here at Kamehameha, we're going to try and do it. We're working on a tri-campus where we have our kids, we'll meet, we've been meeting, and then we're going to have a little summit here and then go on to nationals in July. And you know each campus will take their own amount of students. So I, I thought that was good. And then like, again, Kamehameha will pay for these kids to go and it's no out of pocket. So it's 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 phenomenal. It, it, it makes the dream even more real. So eventually we wanna do a state HHSAA summit again, and hopefully we can utilize the resources we have here at Kamehameha to make that possible. Oh, well, that's a great, great project. And again, I, I love how the school is able to get behind it and, and support those students. Um, and again, the, the talking about the oral option for your CMAA, I was on the NIAAA certification committee for years and, you know, we helped develop that. Uh, when Thank I did you. my CMAA, I kind of enjoyed that whole experience of writing it out and putting it together. But I can tell you, if the oral option had been around, when I was doing mine, I would have been all over that because you're right. It is uh, really cool to talk about your project and actually, you know, present it to a couple of people on certification. Very, very cool stuff. Yeah. So thank you for so, doing that. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, for our listeners, uh, our guest today is Cornelia Haliniak, and she's a CMAA and she's the associate AD at the Kamehameha Schools in Hawaii. We're going to take another quick break, but we'll be back with some more. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Gipper for their support. Go to Gipper.com and see how athletic directors are creating world-class marketing content for their school social media channel. You can do it in seconds and you don't need any design experience. Go to Gipper.com and tell them you heard about it on the podcast. Use our code ADPOD10 and you'll get 10% off. That's Gipper.com. Create custom content for your school's social media channels. We also want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. You know, they're on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. The Wall of Fame is an interactive touchscreen video console that highlights your school's top performers, both past and present, in athletics, academics, and the arts. But it is so much more than that. The Wall of Fame is also an extensive content program that allows you to tell more compelling stories that will better engage your audience. Go to vitalsignswalloffame.com and check out their products. And when you're ready to order, use the link vitalsignswalloffame.com slash Jake and get 5% off your Wall of Fame purchase. That's vitalsignswalloffame.com slash Jake. Check them out today. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Cornelia, one of the things that we try to do with this podcast is the idea of sharing best practices. So uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. What are some things that you do at Kamehameha Schools that you're particularly proud of? You know, maybe these are initiatives that you created or they're things that have been going on for 50 years. But uh, what are some best practices you can share with our listeners? I think for me, coming from the public school sector and the private school sector, that has not changed. Uh, I like to talk a story and check in on the coaches, 
as simple as our athletic utility workers, our lifeguards, you know, our custodians, you know, want to dig deep and get to to sit in there and do what they do. So I know exactly what's going on as far as how they're practicing, how can I help or what I can assist with. I take pride in that, even if I have, and you know it too. Sometimes we have to dig deep and, and scrub toilets and fill toilet paper. And we have to, <laughs> you know, we have to um, see what the athletic utility workers are doing just in case, you know, like here at Kamehameha, you know, they have all assigned jobs at, at a public school sector. We don't have washer and dryers all the time to wash the clothes. So here we have, so I want to get in the grime and dirty to see what they do, regardless what it is. So they know, if I know if they're sick, I can fill in and 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 do what they're doing as well. So I take pride in that. And that's probably done long time, 50, 60 years, 100 years, where you check on your people to make sure they're all okay and, and doing what they need to do. And I think that the, la the, the other biggest thing that makes me happy and great to do, especially on this island before COVID hit, was on this, in the island of Hawaii, we revamped the middle school program, which where we had four schools when I was a public school AD, and then we got 48 teams, which was 13 schools. So it, it moved here. So now we want to start that again and take it to the elementary level, because right now everyone's getting out of COVID and trying to start programs for the youth. So anything 14 and under, there's not too much. And I think the other biggest thing that I pride myself on, and I stress the coaches, and here at Kamehameha, it's much easier because they have to do it, which is community service. So my favorite thing when I'm at the public school sector is playing bingo with the, we call them kupunas, but they're the elderly, you know, and that's so much fun. I used to do it twice a week when I was a public school AD. So here I just, we just got to get back into it and how do I do it logistically for Kamehameha school students to get out and do the 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 bingo thing? Because that's so much fun. They, when you play bingo with the kupunas or the elderly, they love winning toilet paper, you know, tissue, you know, Kleenex, you know, and, and it's just so much fun. Just the little things that they love, Um, you know, some cans of tuna, you know, uh, here and, you know, we're great on spam here. So, you know, cans of spam. You know, so um, that, that that's kind of where I pride myself on is is making sure that that happens all the time. Get our kids out. They're not only athletes or students, they're also in the community to make a difference and give back. So that's that's huge for me. Yeah, so that's kind of what I do. Oh, yeah. and, and those are great. And you touch on such a, an important point of making the connections. Earlier, you talked about relationships, uh, making connections with your community, your stakeholders of all ages. You know, that, that's really a, a cool idea. You and I were talking during the break, and uh, I'm going to you know, again, put you on the spot here. Uh, we were talking about professional development for for coaches. And I, I think it's one of the things that athletic directors enjoy doing the most, but it's also sometimes one of the most challenging things to do because you're so busy with all the other um, things that an AD does. So what are some things that you've done um, either at Kamehameha or at other schools to try and provide professional development opportunities for your coaches? Okay, so for us at Kamehameha Schools here, especially on the island of Hawaii, our head athletic director, Kimo Weaver, he is very stringent that they do their NFHS courses. You have to do that. Uh, we're just getting into the 3D dimensional coaching thing. So that's uh, in the start. <laughs> so he's really good about getting all of that out. For me, in the public school sector, I would email my coaches once a month an article, uh, try to get them into doing things. And I wasn't, uh, we had to do NFHS courses. I would have uh, individual team meetings as well to help educate our coaches at the public school sector. So it, it's, you do a lot of work at the public school sector and at the Kamehameha, at the, pub, at the private school sector for Kamehameha, it's, it's just nice to, to he, he regularly has all the, you know, monthly, whatever it is, is it's, it's video articles and so forth uh coaches clinics we we try to bring it here to our campus you know so that's basically all we do as far as coaches education but i know next year there's an implementation that we have to get more stringent not is that the right word or better better equipped with coaching our coaches right yeah and, and that that's a great lead into the niaa's uh coaching the coaches uh lti course so uh yes. again good stuff 
For listeners, uh, our guest again is Cornelia Alinak, and she's a CMAA. She's the Associate Athletic Director at Kamehameha Schools, but a long time um, uh, career in athletics. Uh, we're going to take another quick break, but please stay with us. We'll be back with some more on the Educational AD Podcast. We want to thank Hometown Ticketing for their support of the podcast. Hometown Ticketing is the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and to colleges. And if you go to hometownticketing.com, they're going to show you how to set up and sell tickets at your school for all your events, not just athletics, but things like school concerts, school plays, dances, even graduation. They'll also assign you a dedicated client success manager that will provide you hands-on support every step of the way. That's every step of the way. Go to hometownticketing.com to get started. Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing. We also want to say thanks to Huddle. Go to huddle.com and change the way you see the game. As a football coach, I used Huddle for years, but when I became an athletic director, I made sure our school was a Huddle school, and our coaches just love the smart cameras, the mobile apps. Of course, they love the analytics, and the tools that Huddle provided us helped our teams, our coaches, and our athletes play at the highest level. Go to Huddle.com and find out why we believe in sports and teams believe in Huddle. Join the 6 million users and turn your school into a huddle school. That's huddle.com. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Our guest is Cornelia Aliniak from the Kamehameha Schools in Hawaii. Um, Cornelia, one of our talking points we actually borrowed from Jen Brooks's great webinar, uh, The Global Community of Women in High School Sports, and it goes like this. Uh, in your career, you know, as a teacher, as a coach, as an AD, what's something that you've learned from your student athletes that's had an impact on you? You know, I think for me, adding on to that list of things like all of us, um, a mom, a friend, a auntie, a, a coach, an administrator, a teacher, whatever you want to call it, um, has helped me understand children more, being a mom, especially being a mama. I love being a mother. I'm going to be a grandmother soon. So I need to learn more things about the upcoming stuff that's going on in school, uh, what the newest sayings are, you know, what the kids are doing, try to be in that loop, but not in that loop. Uh, and I think um, being part of Kamehameha and running a student athlete advisory here is something new for the school and learning what these kids are all about. And you know, what I'm finding out is kids everywhere are the same, no matter what. They all struggle with the social identity, the mental health identity, how to um, communicate and use their words correctly, have a voice. So with this committee that we have with these student athletes, I've learned that a lot of them are sheltered still. You know, um, and we're all brought up everywhere to not use your voice unless it's said correctly. So like, and I'm trying to see the difference how I raised my children versus the kids now. Okay, so if I can teach my kids to use their voice, I can help teach these kids to use their voice the right way. You know, especially with all of these problems that are going on, not only with them internally, but what goes on outside of the world, like like that gender equity. Some of them don't, don't want to come out, you know, they're afraid to, or how they're going to be looked at. And to this day, uh, being a female, how do you use your voice correctly? Because I, I try to teach the kids now nowadays that yes, we're in the athletic world. And I hate to say this, but I'm going to say it. It's still a man's world. And how do we as women express ourselves in it, that different entity? It's not about the pay and equality. Just how do we make it different for females um you know just say your voice and then I find the males have that same problem here you know it's like how do they speak and and say something as simple as okay what is the big island interscholastic federation rule how can we change that a little bit as simple as running a d1 d2 or triple a a how do we make it one and then just give out different prizes why do we have to keep the run separate you know why can't a hundred students just run you know just little things just having them look at that and then I try to explain to them if you have your voice you are able you know to 
maybe make changes. And that's what we want to train the leaders, the, the younger leaders is how you take a job, how do you make a difference? And 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 that's 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 I don't know if I'm answering the question correctly, but that's my passion is to make sure that they know how to use their voice correctly. Cause and we all know that in this society, everyone doesn't use their voice correctly. And and sometimes you're at the top and you don't use it correctly. You know, you're all about the top. We just kind of forget um that we're here for them. That's how we have a job. We're here for the students. So I I, I still I'm still fluctuating back and forth because everything changes everything's new all the time I never know the new slang you know all of a sudden this vape thing is a huge thing you know and then there's that fentanyl going on it's like we want to make them aware of it and and it, it's been working lately so we had our seventh meeting with this student advisory and it was fun they actually spoke so now I can move into having them run it now make make them run the meeting so I I, I don't know if I answered it correctly but that that I, I'm so into the students to make sure that you know, they can time manage. A lot of them don't know time management. Do you know a lot of them don't know how to wash their clothes? I'm I'm at all. I'm like, really? So we have a wash and dryer class, you know, when we have our, it's just as simple as that. Yeah. So um, to, to end with that, we were very fortunate to have our middle school students be managers for our varsity teams. And we had a sixth grader, an air rifle sixth grader that decided to do a nutrition thing for the air rifle team, which was phenomenal. So what she did was work with the cafeteria. Of course, she had a, a teacher working with her, go to our cafeteria, grab whatever leftover fruits and vegetables or snacks and grab it every day, take it up to air rifle so they could eat because the kids are hungry. You know, and people forget that, you know, some of our kids nationwide don't have food, you know, don't take a shower. And by that sixth grader doing that, it it just kicked off. And it was, it was, it's still in, it's still going on for other sports now. So that that was huge. So I, I hope I answered the question correctly. But no, <laughs> you you answered it perfectly. Uh <laughs> and, and again, that that theme is, you know, just we all, you know, we're all there for students or we, we need to be. Uh I love your comment about uh, you know, students not knowing how to do laundry. Um a hundred years ago, uh, when I was an undergraduate student, uh, I didn't do other students' laundry, but I made uh, spare change uh, ironing, you know, shirts and slacks for them. They wanted to go out uh, that night. Uh, you know, my mom, you know, made me iron my own clothes when I was in high school. So I made some pocket change uh, back in the day. So, uh, you know, maybe that's a, a new industry for students doing laundry. You know, it's uh, funny you said that because in, in college, too, because you, you're you're on a budget. When I first went to college, I had to use dishwashing soap as shampoo. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'd recommend that, but uh, obviously <laughs> it, it, it worked out well. <laughs> that's that's a different story, though. That's a different podcast. Uh, our guest today uh, is Cornelia Aleniak, and she is a certified master athletic administrator, the associate AD at the Kamehameha Schools in Hawaii. We're going to take another break, but we're still coming back. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We also want to thank, thank Final Forms for their support. Go to finalforms.com and let them help you prepare for your best season ever. Final Forms is there to ensure compliance, uh, reduce risk for you as an AD, increase safety, help your stakeholders and your coaches. Final Forms can help with communication, with attendance. Uh, for you as an AD, they can help with eligibility and rosters and all the reports that come across your desk. You know, it's time that you talk to a team that's walked in your shoes, somebody who gets it. Go to finalforms.com slash Jake for more information. That's finalforms.com slash Jake to get started with Final Forms. Welcome back, everyone, to the Educational AD Podcast. Cornelia, you know, you and I were talking again during the break. Um, you know, we've been in this profession for a few years. Uh, we're certainly not newcomers to athletics. Um, other than, say, technology, um, you know, email and cell phones and podcasts and things like that, what are some things that you have seen change in the role of the athletic administrator, the athletic leader? Um, you know, what are some changes that you've seen in your time in the profession? 
what have I seen change? Okay, growing up, athletic directors were there. Now the demand for coaches' education has grown. The demand to teach students about college and how to get there. And if they don't want to go, what are you going to do? So careers. I think that has changed a lot. Um, I think I'm trying to compare when I was in high school to now, there's a lot of opportunities, like you said, digital podcasts and stuff. I think we need to bring back kids. I don't know about you, but ha, ha, did you know that some kids don't know how to sign or, you know, sign their name? And I think, yeah, and I think that was with me, like they don't teach script anymore in school, you know? So it's like, can we bring that back a little bit? You know, stuff like that, those, those little things. Um, Cause if they have a contract, they're gonna have to sign it, but now everything can be digitally done. You know, so I, I, I think, I, I think just being there and build relationships is 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 hasn't changed, and that's pretty much still the same. Where coaches and athletic administrators need to make sure we're building relationships not only with the student. We need to get more involved with parents too. Although we don't like to, we need to, and that's just part of our our our, our job. So I think that has been changed a lot since. I don't want to date myself, but since then to now, you know, um, parents need to, I feel, see that you invest in your child in club. Sometimes they won't make it to college. You just have to know that, you know, back then you just play. And then if you get to college, hey, great. Now it's my kid is good. I'm going to they're going to go to college on an athletic scholarship, you know, educating the parents some more that. Yeah, your kid can go to college. Yeah, but only one percent will get an athletic school scholarship. You know, it it it's that data that we you know need to look at. And I think a lot of things have changed where there's more opportunities for kids to learn more. You know, and I think versus then <laughs> back then. So there's there's um a lot a lot of that. And I and and I think basically that's kind of what I look at. So for me, keeping the we call it Pilina here with is build a relationship with our kids and the parents as well and then just just make sure it moves forward and works so as far as what's changed i think there's more demand on on the students now to please their parents and parents get involved too much um uh you know thinking they know what to do and they don't know what to do sometimes <laughs> so versus where before back then you know the parents don't know what to do, but they'll research and do it. I mean, you know, they look for help. And I think that's where, not the struggle is, but more, we have to be more educated on all those things, you know, how to get them to college, how to make a career, how to do internships, you know, just get them out to, to learn and have that experience because you may not have experience, but you have your degree. You have your degree or you don't have your degree, but you have enough experience, but there's no way you can get a job. <laughs> So I think that changed a lot too, you know, so yeah. And I think the pandemic hurt a lot of, um, not hurt, but challenged a lot of kids to work on their time management because they started working during the pandemic because there was no sports, you know? So I, I I think back then we did work though, right? You, you cannot tell me you mm -hmm. didn't work in high school or college. Oh, yeah. You work and then you make do, and then now it's, they don't work and then now they're working again. So, you know, I think that's where I'm at with, the comparison from then and now or what we need to know more as athletic administrators. Right. I, there's no question that, that parents are more involved now than, you know, certainly, you know, when I was in high school, I, I think I'm a little bit older than you. Uh, but uh, I, I do a presentation uh, for coaches and for parents. And, and I bring up the point that I, I had a pretty good high school career, you know, did three sports and, uh, but my parents never, not once, had a conversation with one of my coaches. They were always at my games, but it, it was never, you know, hey, coach, can we talk to you or, or something like that? Uh, and that's just how it was back then. And it's different now. You know, it, it's not, you know, good, bad, right or wrong. It's just different. So understanding that and, um, you know, being able to have conversations with parents. Uh, and you talked about, uh, you know, coaches' education. And I came back with the, uh, 
NIAAA is coaching the coaches course. There's also a parent course, partnering with parents, you know, not giving them the keys to the car, but letting them get in the car and come along for the ride and telling them, okay, this is where you're going to sit. You know, this is your role, you know, giving them a role and, and partnering with them. Uh, so again, very, very important, but certainly a change that we've seen uh, in the profession. Uh, appreciate you sharing. You know, and I think, and I'm sorry, I think loyalty is out the door. Back then, you loyal to your club, loyal to your school, loyal to whoever you're with. Now they just change clubs like, like changing the, the win, you know. So, yeah, no, no, it, it, I, it's frustrating, but it is what it is. I, I, I talk about that exact thing that back in the day, uh, we couldn't wait to wear that high school uniform. Uh, it was something you look forward to and it was about the team and representing your community. And you're absolutely right. Now for, for not all, but for so many kids and parents, it's, you know, well, you know, how many reps am I going to get? You know, uh, you know, what about me? Uh, you know, transferring to different schools. Uh, and again, it's not right, wrong, good or bad. It's different. It's definitely different. So Thanks for sharing. Boy, uh, I wish we could go on uh, longer, but uh, we're, we're coming towards the end. Uh, but we're not done yet. Uh, we always wrap up with the athletic director's toolbox. And uh, you certainly know your way around the world of athletics, but we're going to take our final break and hear from Athletic Surveys, who sponsor the toolbox segment. And when we come back, we're going to find out what Cornelia is going to put into her athletic director <laughs> toolbox. So. Please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for their sponsorship of the AD Toolbox segment. Athletic Surveys are a quick and easy way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire program. Athletic directors typically only hear back from that 2% that disgruntled parent or maybe a frustrated student athlete, and we need to hear from them. But you also need to hear from the 98% that really love and support your program. And that's a tremendously valuable tool to have when you're talking to that disgruntled parent or to your principal or to your school board. Uh, and athletic surveys can provide you with that information. Go to athleticsurveys.com and see how they can create a custom survey for your athletic department. If you've never taken the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Talk to the pros at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. Well, it's that time of the podcast. We've been visiting with Cornelia Liniak, a certified master athletic administrator from Hawaii on the associate AD at the Kamehameha Schools. But um, right now, I'm going to challenge her to send out a brand new athletic director on their very first job, but I'm only going to let her put three things in their toolbox. Cornelia, what three items are going to go into your new athletic director toolbox? Okay, so I got to give you some background. I've been watching your AD podcast for maybe about seven months now. So I didn't catch up on all 500 of them, but I'm working on it. So um, on a toolbox, I'm going to borrow some things from your book, and I'll explain the reason why. So I didn't realize how important a toolbox is until I read, you know, the book, The Athletic Director's Toolbox. I didn't start the second one yet, but I did do the first one. And I was very interested in it because he had like a, a, a duct tape, you know, measuring tape, um, a, a, a tool to, what is it called, a wrench, a scissors, or whatever it is. Okay, so I I I util okay, so I picked tape. I picked duct tape because as a new athletic director, you're not gonna know what's going on. You're gonna need the duct tape to mend things um and patch it up just for temporary purposes, whether it's a leak leaking pole, leaking, leaking water pole or or a volleyball pole or a basketball net, you, you sometimes need a duct tape to mend. And you need that mending with your students, with your athletes, with your coaches as well. So duct tape is very important. The next one is the scissors because you need to cut things. You need to cut students. You need to cut coaches sometimes. You need to cut zip ties that are tightly put on a net or tightly put on a soccer pole. You need to cut it. So that's really important. Um, and then you also have to cut really 
relationships and build new ones. So I, I, scissors is very important. So duct tape, scissors. And the last one is the measuring tape because you have a measuring tape to measure how big you want to get something new. You know, you need lines to be measured. You need nets to be measured. You need fields to be measured, but you also need to measure your balance. You have to balance the time you have. You have to make sure that tape measure doesn't run out because you are so full with people wanting to talk to you, uh, your administration, you have to please them with all the data, you know, you have to do this. And and sometimes that tape measure, well, mine never runs out. It's that big round one, that's why. So it, it, it's, you can utilize it for so much things. And, I, and, and you also can remember how much length it will take to help a student succeed. And if you can do one, that's great. That's all you need is one. And then hopefully you can do more after that. So so that two box book is is just awesome. I gotta go get the other one. So it's like, oh God, yeah, I forgot about that one. Yes. So sorry about that. No, not at all. Uh, I appreciate the shout out. And and I love how you have taken, you know, tools, physical tools, uh, and, and talked about their very important use, but also talked about them in, in kind of a, a, a conceptual way and 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 how to apply them. Uh, across the athletic director spectrum. That's a, that's a great way to uh, uh, sneak in some extra tools in, in a legal way. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, truthfully, the duct tape, you know, you want to duct tape parents' mouths sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another <laughs> podcast. Uh, Cornelia, I forgot to do this earlier in the podcast, so we're going to do it twice. Now, if one of our listeners wanted to reach out and pick your brain a little bit, find out more about how you do things at your school, What's the best way that they can get in touch with you? Email. Email is the best. Is is totally the best. So my email, oh, lights went out. My email is C O H A L I N I at K S B E dot E D U. Okay. Go ahead and give that one more time so people can scribble it down. <laughs> okay. So C O H A L I N I at ksbe.edu. And for our NIAAA members, uh, Cornelia's information is also available through the NIAAA portal. So check it out. Cornelia Haliniak, thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, I, again, it was, you made a big impression on me in Nashville, uh, you know, very enthusiastic, so very friendly and uh, glad we could spend a little bit of time today. Uh, definitely, uh, I definitely need to plan on, uh, coming out and visit you and, uh, and Mahina and your entire school uh, in Hawaii, uh, let's say in the coming months. How's that? Thank you. Aloha. For our listeners, um, we do this just about every day and we upload the Zoom recordings to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. We appreciate you listening. Come back next time for more best practices on the Educational AD Podcast. Have a great day.